Hello everyone, welcome to General Chemistry 1. For this week's topic, we will be studying the balancing chemical equations and stoichiometry. By the way, I am your mom Anjali and Gabriel, your lecturer. So for this week, we are going to write and balance chemical reactions or equations and construct mole or mass ratios for a reaction in order to calculate the amount of reactant needed or amount of product formed in terms of moles or mass. So first, let us have atomic mass and average atomic mass. When we say atomic mass, it is the mass of the atom in atomic mass units or the amo while average atomic mass are the masses in the periodic table that are not written in whole numbers meaning they are expressed in decimal numbers so your periodic table mass is the weighted average of all the isotopes of each element mass spectrometer provides information about percentages of different isotopes of each element. Okay, so, for example, oxygen is the most abundant element brought in the Earth's crust and in the human body. The atomic masses of its three stable isotopes, so we have the three stable isotopes of oxygen, which is the oxygen-16 with an abundance of 99.75%, the oxygen-17 with an abundance of 0.038%, and the oxygen-18 with an abundance of 0.205%. Their masses are 15.99 atomic mass units, 15.99 atomic mass units, and 17.99 atomic mass unit respectively. Now, we are going to calculate the average atomic mass of oxygen using the relative abundances. So, when you say relative abundance of an isotope, it is the percentage of atoms with a specific atomic mass found in a naturally occurring sample of an element. So again, your relative abundances here are the one that is given in the parentheses. So, in every problem solving in chemistry or in physics, the first step is always write the given. So we have that three isotopes, so oxygen-16, oxygen-17, and oxygen-18. Given with their abundances in percentage and their individual masses. So first step, we will convert each percentage abundance into decimal abundance by dividing it by 100. So we have the oxygen-16. The 99.757% will become 0.99757 oxygen-17 and 0.038% will become 0.00038 and the oxygen-18 which is 0.205% will become 0.00205. So next step, we will multiply the mass of each isotope by its fractional abundance or their abundance in decimal. Then add the contributions together. So we have the oxygen-16 with a decimal abundance of 0 0.99 multiplied by its mass which is 15.99 plus oxygen-17 0 0.00038 times 16.99 
plus the oxygen 18, 0 0.00205 or 205 multiplied by 17.99. The answer now is 15.999 atomic mass unit. So your 15.999 atomic mass unit here is now your average atomic mass. Now, let's proceed to more concepts. An amount of a substance that contains Avogadro's number of atoms, ions, molecules, or any other chemical unit is what we call the mole. So, in order for you to understand it better, let's make an analogy. For example, we all know that in one dozen, it contains 12 pieces or 12 things. Just like in one more, one more contains 600 to billion trillion of things, or simply one more is equal to one Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power unit. So... That means that in one mole of an element, in one mole of a mo compound, or in a one mole of molecular substance, they are all equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Okay, so, when element, we will use the unit atom. When it is a compound, we will use the unit particles. When it is in a molecular substance, we will use the unit molecules. We also have the molecular mass or also called the formula mass. So molecular formula mass is the total mass for all atoms in a compound. Okay, so what is the mass of one mole of CH4? So we in the compound, we only have one mole of carbon. In every one mole of carbon, the mass is 12.01 grams. While oxygen or hydrogen in the compound has four moles. In every one mole of hydrogen, the mass is 1.01 grams. So, if we multiply 4 times 1.01 grams, we will get 4.04 grams. Okay, so your 12.01 grams and 4.0 grams, 0 0.04 grams here are what we call your molar masses, individual molar masses. If you will add the individual molar masses or the molar mass of carbon and hydrogen, we will get the molecular mass of the compound CH4. So 12.01 grams plus 4.04 grams the answer is 16.05 grams. So, 16.05 grams here is your molecular formula mass for CH4. Okay, let's proceed to more conversion. When we say mole conversions, it relates grams and moles of an element or compound. Okay, so, calculate the mass in grams of a single molecule of carbon dioxide. So, we have in every one mole of carbon dioxide, the mass is 44.01 grams. So, how did we get 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide? Again, let us first get their individual molar mass. So, in the compound, we have only one atom of carbon multiplied by 12.01, which is the mass of carbon. And oxygen, we have two moles of oxygen in the compound multiplied by the mass of oxygen. One mole of oxygen is equal to 15.99. 
So, if we add the product of these two, we will get the 44.01 grams. Okay, so, in every one mole of carbon dioxide, the mass is 44.01 grams. Times, we said a while ago that in every one mole of a compound, it is equivalent to one Avogadro's number. Therefore, in every one mole of carbon dioxide, there is or there is 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd power molecules. Why do we use molecules? Because CO2 is a compound. So cancel out the mole of carbon dioxide. Now the remaining units are grams and molecules. So 44.01 grams divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. The final answer here is 7.31 times 10 raised to negative 23 grams per molecule of carbon dioxide. Okay, another example. Aluminum is used to build lightweight bicycle frames. How many grams of aluminum are there in 3 mol of aluminum? So our first step again, always write the given. So our given here is the number of moles of aluminum and we are to look for the mass of aluminum. Second step, so our plan is moles of aluminum into grams of aluminum. Next, let's proceed to the conversion factors. So our conversion factor is in every one mole of aluminum, the mass is 26.98 grams. So we have two possible equations here. It can be 1 mole of aluminum is 26.98 grams aluminum or 26.98 grams of aluminum per 1 mole of aluminum. Now, which do you think is the equation? Which do you think of the two equations are we going to use? So next step, let us now proceed to the problem. So we will set up with molar mass as a factor. Again, the given are the number of moles of aluminum times. So we will use here the second equation, which is 26.98 grams of aluminum per 1 mole of aluminum. Why? Because we are looking for the mass. So in order to, be, to cancel out the mole of aluminum, the mole of aluminum should be our denominator. So, cancel out here. Now, the remaining unit is grams. So, we are now ready to compute for the mass. So, in every 3 mole times 26.98 grams, the answer is 80.9 grams of aluminum. So, that means that in every 3 mole of aluminum, the mass is 80.9 grams of aluminum. Now, let's proceed to balancing chemical equation. First, let us know what is chemical equation. So, when a chemical reaction occurs between solutions, it can be described by an equation. This shows the chemical that reacts, or what we call the reactants, which can be found on the left hand, left hand side. And also we have the chemicals that are produced, or what we call the products, on the right hand side. So, reactants and products are separated by an arrow that shows what is yielded from the reaction. So we have here an example. Aluminum plus oxygen gas yields aluminum oxide. So oxygen gas is a diatomic, therefore it is always in pairs. A molecule of aluminum oxide consists of two aluminum atoms combined with three oxygen atoms. So, our reactants here are the aluminum and 
oxygen gas. And our product is the aluminum oxide. Okay, so, two aluminum on the right. So, we add, we add two to the left. So, if we will compute this one, we have two aluminum on the reactant side, two aluminum on the product side. How about the oxygen? So, there are three atoms of oxygen in the product side. So, we will also add a coefficient 3 in the reactant side. But, as you can see, there is a subscript 2. So, if we multiply that, we will get 6 atoms of oxygen. Still, our oxygen is not balanced. Remember class that the coefficient represents the number of moles or molecules of a given formula, while the subscript represents the number of atoms present. Again, when we say coefficient, the number of moles or molecules of a given formula, while the subscript represents the number of atoms present in the compound. So next, now that we have the oxygen balance, we find that aluminum is not. Okay, so we must add two more aluminum to make it four. Again, so we will insert two here in the product side. So we have two times two, we have now four aluminum. And in order to balance it, we will add four to the reactant side. So that we have 4 aluminum from the reactant, 4 aluminum from the product. How about our oxygen? So, because we, we added 2 coefficient here as a coefficient here, when we multiply it by the subscript, we will get 6 atoms of oxygen. So, in the reactant, we have 6 atoms of oxygen. And in the product, we have 6 atoms of oxygen. The equation is now balanced. Okay, another example. We are to balance C2H6 reacts with oxygen gas, yields carbon dioxide, and water. As you can see, the equation is not balanced. So first, let us balance. Okay, let us see the number of atoms in each side. So, for carbon, in the reactant side, we have 2. In the product side, we have 1. For hydrogen, in the reactant side, we have 6. And in the product side, we have 2. Oxygen, 2 in the reactant side, and 3 in the product side. So, all, of, all the elements are not balanced. So first, we will try to add a coefficient beside oxygen gas. When we complete it, we will get our oxygen gas now will become 4. Still, in the product, it is not balanced with the number of oxygen in the product side. So we will add another coefficient. Now let us compute. So, we will multiply the coefficient to the subscript of hydrogen that will become 6 in the product side. And for oxygen, therefore we, are, we have 3 oxygen here in the product side plus the oxygen that is present in the carbon dioxide which is 2. So, if you will add that one, you will get 5 atoms of oxygen. Still, the equation is not balanced. Now, we will try to change the 2 into 7. So, if you will multiply 7 times 2, you will get 14 atoms of oxygen. Now, let us try also to change the co coefficient in the product side. We will change the coefficient, the first coefficient into 6. So, if you want to multiply it by the 
subscript, we will get 6 hydrogen atoms. Also, the oxygen will change. So, we will have 6 plus 2. We will get 14 oxygen atoms. So, again, the occupation beside the carbon dioxide will affect the carbon. Now, in the product side, we will have, we have 4 carbon atoms. We only have 2 carbon atoms in the reactant side. In order to balance this one, we will add a coefficient 2. So, 2 times 2, we will get 4. And 2 times 6, for hydrogen, we will get 12. Now, the equation is now balanced. Okay. Let's proceed to stoichiometry or the mass relationship in chemical reaction. Okay. So when we say stoichiometry, it represents the exact mass or moles of the reactants which are required to react with each other without any wastage. It is the finding out the exact mass or moles of the product which will be formed. Again, stoichiometry is represented by a balanced equation. So, it is understood that the first step in stoichiometry is to balance the given equation. So, we have the different types of stoichiometry. First type, we have the mole to mole, which relates the moles of the reactants with the moles of products. Second, we have the mole to mass, which relates the moles of the reactants with the mass of the product. The mass to mole, the mass of the reactants relate to the moles of the products. And the mass to mass, which relate the mass of the reactants with the mass of the product. So first, let us have the mole-to-mole -mole conversions. So we have an example. When N2O5 is heated, it decomposes. So from N2O5, which is a gas, it will produce nitrogen oxide and oxygen gas. So again, the first step is to balance the equation. So there are coefficients in the reactant 2 and in the product 4. Let us check if the coefficients added are correct. So, we have 2 times 2, we have 4 nitrogen in the reactant. 4 times 1, we have 4 nitrogen in the product. 2 times 5, we have 10 oxygen in the reactant. And 4 times 2, 8 plus the 2, uh, the oxygen gas, which is 2 atoms. So, 8 plus 2 is 10. Now, our equation is correctly balanced. Now, how many moles of NO2 can be produced from the 4.3 moles of N2O5? Again, we are looking for the moles of NO2. So, NO2 is product. So, we will relate that mole of the reactant. So, we have the equation. The balance equation. So again, the number of moles in the reactant is 4.3 mole. And we are to look for the moles of nitrogen oxide. Now, how do we solve for this one? So, 4.3 moles of N2O5 times... Okay, so in writing the equation, let us use the balance equation as our basis. Okay, so in every 4 moles of NO2, there are 2 moles of N2O5. Where did you get this um, equation? Or this? We, we, uh, we base this one from the balance equation. Again, as you can see in the balance equation, in every 4 moles of NO2, there are 2 moles of N2O5. 
N205 will be our denominator in order to cancel it out. So we will solve this one, 4.3 times 4 divided by 2. The answer is yes, 6.8.6 uh, moles of NO2. Now we will get the units mole of NO2 because we are looking for the moles of NO2. So in this equation or in this problem, we relate the number of moles of the reactant from the number with the number of moles of the product. Okay, another one. How about the moles of oxygen gas? Uh, let us relate also the moles of oxygen gas to the moles of to the given moles of the reactant. Again, oxygen gas is another product of N2O5. So we have same procedure. We have 4.3 mole of N2O5 times in every 1 mole of oxygen gas, there are 2 moles of N2O5. Where did we get this one? We base this from the balance. Again, do not forget first to balance your equation. So, cancel out the more N2O5. 4.3 divided by 2. The answer is 2.2 more. Let's proceed to gram to mole and gram to gram conversions. When N2O5 is stated with the composite, again we will use the same equation to solve for the problem. Mass of N2O5 values if 210 grams of NO2 were produced. Here we will relate the number of moles of the nine of the reactant to the given mass of the given mass of the product. Always use the balance equation as our basis in solving the problem. So, first lot is right is given, which is 210 grams, multiplied by, in every 1 mole of NO2, the mass is 46 grams of NO2. So, 46 grams here is the molecular mass of NO2, wherein uh, nitrogen is 1 times the mass of nitrogen is 14 times oxygen, the mass of oxygen is 16, but in the compound, we have two atoms of oxygen, so 2 times 16 is 32. When you add that one, you will get 46.0 grams of NO2. Now, cancel out the unit of grams of NO2. Then next, in every 2 mole of N2O5, there are 4 moles of NO2 produced. This was taken from the balance equation. Now make sure that our remaining unit is matched from the unit or from the unit that we are looking for. So cancel out the mole of NO2. So the problem we are looking for the mole of NO5. The remaining unit in the equation is the mole of NO5. So our units are matched. And the final answer here is 2.28 moles of N2O5. How many grams of N2O5 are needed to produce 75 grams of O2? So here, it is the gram to gram. Again, write what is given, which is 75 grams of O2 multiplied by, if you have one mole of O2, the mass is 32 grams. Cancel out grams of O2 times in every 2 mole of N2O5, there is 1 mole of O2 being produced. Again, this was taken from the balance equation. So, cancel out mole of oxygen. Our units are still mismatched because we are looking for the mass, not for the mole. So, we will need to get the molecular mass of N2O5 so in every one mole of N2O5 the mass is 108 grams so cancel out mole now the remaining unit there is gram of 
Now, our final answer is 506, 506 grams of oil. So before we will end this discussion, I want you to answer this one in the discussion board. Why is stoichiometry important? So that's all for today. Thank you for listening.